Hello, everyone. It is March 17th, 2021. Today's afternoon devotional and Bible study. We will be reading through Jesus is Calling today in the book of 2 Samuel chapter 14. Um, today, I was actually going to go for a little bit of walk and find this uh, nice little water path. Um, but unfortunately, the trails are closed off and no walking. So we're coming at you a little bit earlier uh, from the van again. Um, and, uh, no water going behind me, but that's okay. Uh, and we'll, uh, going to start off with, uh, Jesus is calling for today. Come to me for understanding since I know you far better than you know yourself. I comprehend you in all your complexity. No detail for, no detail of your life is hidden from me. I view you through eyes of grace. So don't be afraid of of my intimate awareness. Allow the light of my healing presence to shine into the deepest recesses of your being, cleansing, healing, refreshing, and renewing you. Trust me enough to accept the full forgiveness that I offer you continually. This great gift which cost me my life is yours for all eternity. Forgiveness is at a very at the very core of my abiding presence. I will never leave you or forsake you. When no one else seems to understand you, simply draw close to me. Rejoice in one, in the one who understands you completely and loves you perfectly. As I fill you with my love, you become a reservoir of love, overflowing into the lives of other people. <laughs> I had a feeling that was going to happen right when I was reaching over because I realized as I was reading... That I forgot uh, to turn off the ringer. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, that idea that we can't hide anything from God. Everything's exposed. We've been talking a lot the last couple of days about David's secret sin and how God knew it. We can't really hide anything from God. And we strive so many times to try to hide uh, these secret sins from God. And um, I, you can't do that. But at the same time, he knows you so much more, so much more complex than you ever could. And he loves you despite all of that. But if you ever get that feeling that like, oh yeah, if they ever really knew me, then they wouldn't like me. Never mind, love me. God does. And he does. Anyways, uh, that was inspired by a couple different sections of the Bible. Uh, the first... Oh, Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my laying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O oh Lord. Psalm 139, 1-4. Now it is God who makes us both, and you stand firm in Christ. And uh, he anoints us sets his seal of ownership on us and he puts his spirit in our hearts as a deposit guaranteeing guaranteeing what is to come second corinthians 1 21 to 22 and then lastly no one will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life as i was with moses so i will be with you i will never leave you nor forsake you first joshua 5 all right, now we're going to be jumping uh, into the book again of uh, Second Samuel. Uh, this is a pretty intense book. Uh, so far, uh, the last couple days, we dealt with uh, David seeing Bathsheba, going like, I like her. I'm going to get her to come into my quarters and have my ways with her. And then I'm going to kill her husband to hide the fact that I got her pregnant. And then... Uh, his son Tamar, uh, his son um, uh, Anon, and was heavily in like with a beautiful sister named Tamar, who he ended up raping. Absalom, uh, one of the other brothers, knew about it, uh, took care of Tamar, and a couple years later, invited a big dinner together, killed uh, Anon, and was like, yeah. Y'all should be ashamed of yourselves for letting our brother do this to our sister. 
and uh, David grieved the loss of his son, but uh, wants to be reunited with Absalom. Um, and this was like one of those things that happened in the family, but no one talked about it. They all just wanted to ignore it and hope that it would all go away and smooth over um, and for a couple of years. And then finally, Absalom struck. And one of the big things from yesterday, after Amon raped Tamar, it went like he was so in love with her, it made him physically sick. And then after it happened, he said it, it says that he hated her even greater than he loved her. Um, or, yeah, I want to read that. His love turned to hate and he hated her even more than he had loved her get out of here he snarled so it's a pretty heavy uh little couple days um so now uh we're gonna read um about uh uh absalom uh possibly returning to david so without further ado second samuel chapter 14 uh joab arranges for absalom's return Joab realized how much the king longed to see Absalom. So he sent for a woman from uh, Tico, Ticoa, who had been, um, who had a reputation for great wisdom. He said to her, pretend you are in mourning, wearing mourning clothes, and don't put on lotions. Act like a woman who has been mourning for the dead for a long time. Then go to the king and tell him the story about Tell him the story I'm about to tell you. Then Joab told her what to say. When the woman from Tekoa approached the king, she bowed with her face to the ground in deep respect and cried out, Oh, king, help me. What is the trouble? The king asked. Alas, I am a widow, she replied. My husband is dead. My two sons had had a fight out in the field, and since no one was there to stop it, one of them was killed. Now the rest of the family is demanding, let us have our son. We will execute him for murdering his brother. He doesn't deserve to inherit the family's property. They want to extinguish the only coal I have left. And my husband's name and family will disappear from the face of the earth. Leave it to me, the king told her. Go home and I'll see to it that no one touches him. Oh, thank you. Oh, my lord, the king. The woman from Tekoa replied, If you are criticized for helping me, let the blame fall on me and on my father's house, and let the king and his throne be innocent. If anyone objects, the king said, bring him to me. I can assure you he will never harm you again. Then he said, Please swear to me by the Lord your God that you won't let anyone take vengeance against my son. I want no more bloodshed. As surely as the Lord lives, he replied, not a hair on your son's head will be disturbed. Please allow me to ask one more thing, my lord, the king, she said. Go ahead and speak, he responded. She replied, why don't you do so much for the people of God as you have promised to do for me? You have uh, convicted yourself in making this decision because you have refused to bring home your own banished son. All of us must die eventually. Our lives are like water spilt out on the ground, which cannot be gathered up again. But God does not just sweep life away. Instead, he devises ways to bring us back when we have been separated from him. I've come to plead with my lord, the king, because people have threatened me. I said to myself, perhaps the king will listen to me and rescue us from those who would, get, who would cut us off from the inheritance God has given us. Yes, my lord, the king will give us peace of mind again. I know that you are like an angel of God in discerning good from evil. May the lord your God be with you. I must know one thing, the king replied, and tell, the, tell me the truth. Yes, my lord, the king, she responded. Did Joab put you up to this? And the woman replied, my lord, the king, how can I deny it? Nobody can hide anything from you. Yes, Joab sent me and told me what to say. He did it to place the matter before you in a different light. But you are 
as wise as an angel of God, and you understand everything that happens among us. So the king sent Joab and told him, All right, go and bring back the young man, Absalom. Joab bowed with his face to the ground in deep respect and said, At last, I know that I have gained your approval, my lord, the king, for you have granted me this request. Then Joab went to Gesher and brought Absalom back to Jerusalem. But the king gave this order, Absalom may go in, may go to his own house, but he must never come into my presence. So Absalom did as the king, uh, did not see the king. Absalom uh, is reconciled to David. Now Absalom was praised as the most handsome man in all of Israel. He was flawless from head to toe, or head to foot. He cut his hair only once a year, and then only because it was so heavy. When he weighed it out, it came to five pounds. He had three sons and one daughter. His daughter's name was Tamar, and she was very beautiful. Absalom lived in Jerusalem for two years, but never got to see the king. Then Absalom sent for Joab to ask him to intercede for him, but Joab refused to come. Absalom sent for him a second time, but again, Joab refused to come. So Absalom said to his servants, Go and set a fire to Joab's barley field, the field next to, to mine. So they set his field on fire, and uh, as Absalom commanded. Then Joab came to Absalom at his house and demanded, Why did your servants set, set my field on fire? And Absalom replied, Because I want to ask the king why he brought me back from Gasher, if he didn't intend to see me. I might as well have stayed there. Let me see the king. If he finds me guilty of anything, then let him kill me. So Joab told the king what Absalom had said. Then at last David summoned Absalom, who came and bowed before the king, and the king kissed him. Um, and may God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Um, as I'm reading a lot of this i the big lesson that i get from this is reconciliation is hard and it takes time mourning is hard and it takes time um the king loves both of his sons and this awful thing was done and um the king knows what's right and what's wrong logically and he was willing to do that for this other woman. And, um, but he himself, he's too close to it. He wants to do the right thing, but his emotions and, and, and everything, it's still very raw to him. Um, and he needs to process to do the right thing. And sometimes it's just that willingness to, to try to do it that can help get us there. And sometimes it's very easy to insert um like oh like this is the right way to do it this is the right way to do it when we're outside of the situation and we're not emotionally and um really invested um it can be hard sometimes with the people that we're closest to and sometimes that can take a lot of time too um and that also goes into like that whole like if we really care someone there's that willingness to be hurt but there's like it, it just, when we care for people, which is awesome, you know, um, actions and stuff like that mean more and more and more. So let me pray uh, for today because that's really all I got uh, from today is as far as like practical application. Um, it's really interesting to see this family uh, piecing things together and trying to get things back to normal. So, um and like the heaviness and the weight and everything's still there. The fact that he calls his daughter Tamar in honor of his sister, like it's there, it's prevalent. Like there's that reminder, but also like that hope. And it's, it's an interesting thing. You can like the emotions and the story and the thought processes are really exposed, even though it doesn't go into detail on stuff. 
which I, I really appreciate the writers for. Um, but yeah, all right, let, let's pray. AJC, awesome Jesus Christ. I thank you for this uh, part of uh, 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel 14, as um, we pros process grief and forgiveness, that it can take time. Reconciliation can take time. It, it's earned and it means something as that time extends. Um, I forget what happens in the next chapter or in the chapter after that right now. Um, so Lord, I'm, I'm along for this journey as well. And, um, it's, it's a difficult time and we can see the emotion, the hurt and the grief that's still going on with Absalom and, uh, his family and David, especially he knows, David knows the right thing to do, but he has to process it. He has to have time to forgive and time to mourn. Lord, help us to have that time to mourn and that time to process and to be willing to be gracious when the timelines of friends and family might be slower than others. But let the party that that knows that that has wrong, that is asking for forgiveness, let them still feel forgiven and that it's a process and give them extra doses of grace and peace. It's a difficult thing, Lord, that you ask us and call us to forgive and to love one another. And we get when we get invested in each other's lives, there's challenges that come up and give us the strength to meet those challenges and to overcome them and for closer relationships to be formed. May we feel loved by those in our family and our friends and our workplaces and in the communities that you've called us to. And help us to forgive and to mourn and to strive for reconciliation whenever possible, whenever needed. Thank you for the intercession that Joab brought and how he brought this third party in to kind of show the right thing and that David accepted it. <coughs> Sometimes we need mediators, Lord. Help give us wisdom and guidance when that's needed as well. Thank you, Lord. All right. Well, hopefully you guys have a chance to enjoy the almost double-digit weather out here. Uh, and, yeah, have a great day. God bless. Bye.